Hi, I'm Nick with Make. For this weekend project, we're going to use simple materials to make something rather amazing. A 3D computer interface made out of cardboard and aluminum foil that can track the position of your hand. I know it sounds crazy, but you've really got to check this project out. Here's the finished project in action. As you move your hand through the sensor cube, the colored sphere follows along on the screen. Impossible, you say? Here's how it works. Each plate acts like a capacitor that can store a charge when a voltage is applied to it. Each plate is attached to a different pin on the Arduino, which provides the voltage and current to charge the plate. As your hand approaches the plate, your body electrically couples with the plate and changes its capacitance. The higher the capacitance, the longer it will take for the plate to fully charge. The software on the Arduino measures the time it takes for the plate to charge. The change in the charge time corresponds to the hand's distance from the plate. By adding a plate for each dimension and measuring them in turn, we can establish the hand's position in three dimensions. You will need the following parts for this build. You will also need and these tools. Start with three cardboard squares, about 12 inches square. Attach three similar sized pieces of aluminum foil to one side of each square with spray glue or glue stick. Work slowly and make sure to leave a small gap around the edge of the foil. It is important that the foil plates do not touch each other when we tape the three sides together. Using tape, assemble the plates to form one half of a cube. Next, we need to prepare the wiring. It is important to use shielded wiring so that the cable itself doesn't act as an antenna and skew your sensor readings. Cut the wire into three two-foot lengths. Strip off the outer and inner insulation. On one end, trim the shielding wire and connect just the inner signal wire to an alligator clip. Repeat for each length of wire. On the other non-alligator clipped end of the cables, twist the three shield wires and solder them together. The shield will be connected to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino, which will minimize the antenna effect of the cable on the circuit. As shown in this schematic, each plate connects to an Arduino pin through a 10K resistor. In addition, each plate will have a 220K pull-up resistor. In turn, each plate will be charged and then discharged through these resistors. Twist connect a 10K resistor to the inner signal wire of each cable as shown. Then twist connect a 220K resistor to each signal wire and solder both resistors to each wire. Twist and then solder the three 220K resistors together, then solder a piece of jumper wire from the shield wire to these resistors. Then add a second jumper wire from this junction. The wires are now ready to connect to the Arduino. Connect the three 10K resistors to pins 8, 9, and 10. Connect the jumper wire to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. Attach each of the alligator clips to a foil plate. The clips should be attached in the following order. Pin 8 to the left or X plate, pin 9 to the bottom or Y plate, and pin 10 to the right or Z plate. Make sure that each clip is making good electrical contact with the foil and is only touching one plate. Now the sensor cube is ready, and all you need to do is upload the Arduino sketch. Download the Arduino and processing sketches from the how-to on Make projects. You'll also need the processing and Arduino development environments, which can be downloaded from their respective websites. From the Arduino IDE, upload the sketch to the Arduino. Keep the USB cable connected to the Arduino, then install and load the processing sketch. It is important that the Arduino is properly grounded for this to work properly. Make sure your computer is plugged into the wall, not running on battery. The next thing to be done is calibrate the software. With the processing sketch running, hold down the left mouse button. Then move your hand from the far outer diagonal corner to the inner corner. Don't touch the foil, just move your hand through the space defined by the cube. Now release the mouse button. The path your hand traveled gives the software a chance to detect the range of motion your hand will make inside the cube. Now everything should be set. As you move your hand around inside the cube, the sphere should follow your movement. 
This project shows you one way you can use a microcontroller to turn very simple materials into capacitive sensors. The same techniques can be used to make your own touchscreens or turn pennies into switches. Try it and you'll see how a simple idea can yield surprising results.